All right, everybody, it's Bolt Matrix, and today we are taking a look at the first official ROTB figure or set that I've gotten a hold of. I picked this up over at Walmart. They had a display, and they had the, well, they had everything but the deluxes, the beast, uh, what do you call them? I don't know. There are so many sublines to this movie that I've completely lost track, but no deluxes, no Voyagers, no leaders. But I do have Scourge coming from the Hasbro Pulse. Box is quite nice. I love the green. I absolutely love the green. Kind of reminds me of Ghostbusters and Slimer, but I'm here for it. So yeah, let's open them up and take a look. Something I do want to show off is the actual paper zip ties are yellow, which I do appreciate. They're not super color match, but I mean, you're just going to cut them off anyway. The only ones that are really problematic are the ones in the upper corners. I have to cut them and then you have to cut the one on the outside. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get the mask out, which is a shame. But cut that in the corner and then get in there and cut whoop, that one. And then it'll come and get pulled right out. Of course, it will get stuck because that's just the way things go. And just be wary of these big pieces on the bottom of the packaging. These are the little ears for Bumblebee. You don't want to throw those out by accident. I do love the backsplash that these figures are coming with. We've got Primal, the Predacon symbol, the Maximal symbol, Scorponok, Tarantulas, Dinobot, Rhinox, Megatron, Air Razor, a Decepticon symbol, an Autobot symbol. Oh, and there's Cheetor. I missed Cheetor right there. Right there. And here we go. There we are. I am Bumblebee. I want to go with the boy. Which is the worst line of any of these movies. Okay, second worst. Yeah, uh, this is definitely a mask, and it fits my fat head. Except my nose. It is crushing my nose inside here. I don't know how well that that's going to show up, but there is a nose piece right there, and it hurts. It's hard plastic. It ain't soft. Uh, I'm tempted to see if, what this looks like on my son, but on an adult, it does work, just a bit uncomfortable. Overall, from an aesthetic standpoint, the mask looks pretty good. Color matching is okay. It's not perfect, though, especially with the pieces that weren't obviously cast in yellow. Specifically, you can see right up here the brow is not the same color yellow as the cast pieces around the Autobot symbol. And then the bottom where the mouthpiece is, or the mouth guard, isn't the same yellow as the sides. I can forgive this because this is dark gray plastic that's got multiple coats, a little sloppily, I might add, over the, well, dark gray plastic. And I'm not sure that the yellow paint is exactly the same. I would love if somebody like, oh, I don't know, my good buddy Grimlockamus got a hold of this and painted it up a little bit better. And you know what would be even cooler? Actually adding some like sunglasses or tinted plastic in here in the eyes that might just be able to snap in via magnets so that it could be, you know, like an actual bumblebee mask without, you know, human eyes back there because that's not creepy at all. All right, time for the transformation. First, turn the mask upside down and grab the bottom of the mask and pull out Bumblebee's head. And when you do so, you can pull out the last bit of the little twist tie because that stuck, oddly, around the robot's neck. Now, turning the figure around, you can see the arms and the feet. So there are the arms. So we want to unpeg these sections and lift them up and away from the rest of the body. And there's, this, there's a clip right there that's kind of hard to unpeg. It does require a bit of force, but if I figure if I pull too hard, it's gonna snap clean off. So, okay, we got those bits. Then we take these flaps, turn them in, and then grab the shoulders and turn them up, and then bring the arms around, and you can hear the ratcheting. And then get the little head piece out of the way. So that's it for the arms situate them like so. Now that we've got the Devil Bee Gundam here, or I should say Dark Bee Gundam, <laughs> I 
we have to come down to the legs and where the feet are. The feet are connected via two pegs that are really a pain in the butt to get undone and require a lot more force than I'm really comfortable with, but it's not that bad. So they will fold forward and unpeg. And, and then this whole front head section will flip up and around and there are two pegs right there and they will peg into the shoulders. Now, the one thing you have to be careful of is this. I just wanna make sure that that's not getting clumped up too much and then peg it in. And then we can grab the legs, swing them down swing them around and stands up defeats the figure we end up with is not bad looking but good god does it need more paint or something to break up those legs and then the rest of the figure looks fine except for the chest because that chest again needs better paint i will give hasbro credit the head sculpt is pretty darn good it is painted well but i would have loved the autobot symbol to be painted Eyes are beautiful blue, and that face does work well in person. The figure itself stands pretty darn well, and everything is ratcheted, and that creak you heard was my chair. That wasn't the figure, or my bones, that was the chair. Posability for this guy is weird. Head does not move at all. It's just a solid piece of plastic. Shoulders are ratcheted to a point, then another set of ratchets, and another set of ratchets that only has one ratchet. And then there is forearm swivel, no fist articulation, however. No torso articulation, but legs are on big ball joints. I mean, look at those ball joints. And they have plenty of room to articulate. Then the knees are articulated for side-to-side -side movement, or ratcheted for side-to-side -side movement, and then, oh, we gotta flip up these calves, and then ratcheted for bending at the knees, and then you've got feet that are double hinged, or I don't wanna say double hinged, there's a pin for side-to-side -side that is ratcheted, and then big old ball joints in the feet for, well, articulation, what else? The only problem is that the feet don't articulate enough to be able to get some decent poses off without it falling over. I keep having the dang thing fall over on me. Unfortunately, you're going to have to forget about the superhero landing pose. It just doesn't work. But probably the biggest sin is that the figure can't dab at all. So, I mean, at that point, it's basically worthless, right? All right. All kidding aside, I do actually like this thing quite a bit. I do wish there was some more posability and some better paint, but overall, it's pretty cool. We've never had anything like this before, and it is fun. It is fun. It's expensive, though. And by expensive, I mean 30 bucks. All right, size comparison time. Deluxe Legacy Shrapnel, Legacy Voyager Tarn, and Leader Class The Fallen. Overall, Bumblebee Mask is pretty neat. I, I like it. It's something we've never gotten before, at least not that I can remember, and it's unique. So props for, to Hasbro for that, and maybe Takara. I don't know if Takara had anything to do with this, but it's cool. Now, I've got the Optimus, or Optimus Primal mask on its way from Amazon. That'll be here probably later in the week. And I will definitely review that and give you a whirl. Oh, uh, my son did try this on, and he didn't really like it. It was kind of comfortable for him because, you know, he's smaller and he's eight. But he doesn't really like Bumblebee all that much. I think he might like the monkey mask more when, once it's here. So fold those legs up. Grab the whole chunk up here. Fold it down and get these connectors in place. Once you know or do the transformation once, it kind of makes sense on how it goes back together, and it's pretty easy. I won't say it's 100% enjoyable, because it's not, but it's not hard, that's for sure. Just getting some of the stuff, like these um, 
these clips back into place is annoying because they require more force than I think they should. <laughs> but as I said, getting them back in place, it's not hard. It just requires, as I said, more force than I think it should. There. And on to there we go. Lastly, take those gray bits and flip them forward and get them clipped into place and we're done. And that has been my look at the Transformers Rise of the Beasts 2-in-1 Converting Roleplay Bumblebee Mask. Is it perfect? No, but it is fun. Now, as I said earlier, I do have my Optimus Primal Mask coming from Amazon. This was available at my local Walmart. So is the Optimus Primal Mask. But I just pre-ordered it before I went to Walmart. And I'll just wait for it to show up from Amazon. I don't have time to do all these reviews in one night, so I've got to space it out a little bit. Anyway, let me know what you think of this thing down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I have been Bob Matrix, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.